When we first dreamed up this thing, we really had no idea how people would respond. It exceeded our wildest dreams. I'm very excited. I'm stunned by the turnout. When we got out of the taxi on the corner of 43rd Street and the line was snaking around the block, this is for literature. New York is a city which has international festivals of everything, and it seemed nuts that there wasn't an international literary festival. I mean, the city seems to be absolutely buzzing with Penwara voices. I think it's pretty incredible that poetry is still alive. Don't you? As well. I sweep through city streets, my wings outstretched. If you live in a conflict situation. We were feeling that there was a kind of breakdown in communication between the United States and the rest of the world, and that at least at the level of art, the level of literature and ideas, we could do something to restart that conversation. The book is... To allow American voices to be in dialogue with world voices. The people of New York have so obviously shown that this is a festival that they want to happen. And it's wonderful to see that in the immortal words of Kevin Costner, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> the Penn World Voices Festival of International Literature starts tonight here in New York. It's the only gathering that celebrates international literature in the United States, and it features 150 writers from 40 countries in over 50 events. In the program, I count writers and translators working in Arabic, Asante Tree, Basque, Catalan, Chinese, Danish, Dutch, German, Greek, Hebrew, Italian. Some of the most articulate, most aspiring writers uh, on the planet. In America, it's not true. That I came in from uh, Los Angeles. It's been uh, inspiring and wonderful. My head is burning. <laughs> it's the big names, man. Gotta see them. You obviously have to have, you know, the best-known names. But we've always tried to find hot young writers and try and introduce them to an American readership. Sometimes writers will come here and speak, and as a result of that, they leave with publishers. Hi, um, I'm Zadie Smith. Um, thank you. I think it's fantastic. Thank you so much. It's just been nice communicating with writers that I would never meet normally international writers, that's quite rare. And it's just been in a really casual and interesting environment. Not at all pompous and really enjoyable. Let me just say that it's a great honor for me to be here among these great writers and it's an incredible disgrace that they are here with me. Salman Rushdie got me into it and uh, I love to support it. I am going to read passages from a novel called Paradise. The moon came and went, but we remained where we were, bound to this enclave of the disappeared. It's always very meaningful and, and, and moving, and it, I think it takes, takes us out, us small-minded New York writers, we start to remember the bigger picture. Writing is a catalyst for change. Beyond that, I'm not prepared to go. But, let's face it, what a beautiful, protean, unpredictable, ecumenical catalyst. We can turn it into a celebration, you know, we can turn it into a way of looking at people's work as work, not just because they're in, in jail or tortured, but, but to talk about them as artists. And I think that's what they would want. Writing is a very powerful weapon. I remember in prison, they inspect my cell. The head of them used to tell me, if I find paper and pen in your cell, it is more dangerous than if I find a gun. At the heart of all Penn's work for more than 90 years is the belief that a free and open exchange of writers and of literature is essential for promoting mutual understanding and peace. These are the true revolutions of literature, these invisible, intimate communions of strangers, these tiny revolutions inside each reader's imagination. Reading is an act of free will. It's an intimate dialogue between you and the text, and in there is all kinds of possibility, where it is possible to imagine a world that we could invent differently, a world that we could live in differently. Thank you.